2020 has changed how we do business and is reshaping our idea of the workplace. The digital age has broken down geographic and personal barriers, allowing access to more innovative opportunities without any physical limitations. With unemployment at an all-time high, many people have had to start again. For many, entrepreneurship might be the answer. Hi, I'm Marissa Menech, and you're listening to the Woven Experiences Podcast. Here we share stories around important topics and explore the interconnectedness between ourselves and the world around us. Let's get into it. Today's guest is Naledi Mashehu, the Managing Director and sole founder of Cherry Republic a digital marketing agency specializing in graphic design, social media management, and web design. Welcome to the Woven Experiences podcast. Thanks so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. (laughs) So Cherry Republic is celebrating its fifth birthday. Firstly, congrats. And then secondly, since it's been five years, You know, can you list like five highlights of your career since starting the company? Oh, wow. (laughs) I'd say number one right now is being able to say we're celebrating our first birthday. That for me is amazing. I'm overwhelmed by that. It's very exciting and I'm happy to say we five. Um, Secondly, I would say it's my team. It's been great um, having the business grow and have new faces and still have the original faces that are with the business when we started. So that's quite nice. Um, And then, wow, five. (laughs) Um, (laughs) What else can I think of at the top of my head? Um, I think it's still great to be liking what I do. Um, I, I am one that likes the process. Like I actually like the whole trying to find new clients, trying to understand what this person needs and seeing that this client is different from another client, that's usually where I get my kick from. And I still find that I I still have to go out there and find new business. And I think that's the thing, no matter how big we go, it will always be like that. And the fourth thing would be, um, I guess the, it's nice to see where we've come from as a business and the type of work we're doing years ago and the type of work we're doing now and just going, oh my gosh, wow, we've improved. And that's quite nice because you always want to change and grow and they always mm-hmm. say you should look at your old stuff and go like, oh, because <laughs> then that <goes. laughs> you're growing. <laughs> so I think that that's definitely my number four. And then my number five, hmm, I don't know. Number five was a tricky one. Number five would be, I think, just being grateful to be still around. I think it ties into number one, but it is something I think about quite often because you never know. One day you're here, next day you're gone, and it's just nice to be grateful and happy we're still around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, especially with uh, current circumstances. So true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So true. But you just mentioned, mentioned that you like the hustle. You like being hands-on. Is uh, that one of the reasons why you chose to pursue entrepreneurship over working for an existing company? Mm-hmm. Definitely. Because I've always liked, uh, was entrepreneurship every day is different. Um, it's always a new challenge. Mm-hmm. It's You don't just do the one thing you're designated to do. Like I've had to like figure out how uh, like accounting payroll system works, how oh HR works, how to motivate the team. Um, so it's like, and now it's my new phase is the challenge of managing many people instead of just like two people. Um, mm-hmm. That's been quite an interesting one. So I find that like, for me, I like the challenge. I like the uncertainty and I like the constant. I have to ev- like change myself and just evolve constantly. And mm. I like that. Like owning a business, you don't just have one job. I I probably do 150 things, <laughs> especially earlier in the early days. I was 
posting on social media. I was doing the graphic yeah. design, everything. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> well, it wasn't. It's not boring, that's for sure. Oh yeah, definitely not boring. <laughs> <laughs> well, like you just said, you know, as an entrepreneur, you often find yourself learning or doing things on the job. Can you tell me about a time when you had no idea what you were doing? <laughs> well, that was like, I guess, the first three years. <laughs> to be honest, uh, it for me, like I, I never, I, I was like, I taught myself the whole entrepreneurship. Thing. Um, I didn't come from a family of entrepreneurs so I had to learn how to go out there get clients um, I also had to learn about my business because um, digital marketing wasn't something I did solely when I had a job uh, but what I did is just I just upskilled myself I did a, a online digital marketing course um, at, at Cooton University in Australia and then I just made sure that I know all I could know in terms of the book side of things but they you can't no one teaches you the practical side of things which is how to go, go out there and just get the clients so that was the part mm. that I had to learn on my own I had to network it's it's been yeah I faked it till I like I'm making it <laughs> and, <then laughs> you, and also like I never worked in a big agency so I had to ask friends who did and say oh how do you guys give your clients this um this client asked me for this is that normal so it's also leaning on people who have done it people who have the background and I had to just constantly like keep learning and build something like from scratch and just lean on a few resources I had so yeah now with your experience being the entrepreneur that you are and now looking at new entrepreneurs emerging what are some of the biggest mistakes you see them make Mm -hmm. um I number one I would always say the first step which is the hardest thing is I you have to always reinvest in the business so I think that's usually a mistake I see other entrepreneurs make. Um, Like how I looked at my journey, it's just constantly been like, I just kept reinvesting in the business. The business was always priority number one. And I think it's so important to do that for a couple of years till your business finds its feet. And then you can start looking at other things. So I think that's um, number one. And also, I guess, growing too quickly. And, well, I think this also ties up with my third point would be like seeing when you make a mistake, acknowledge your mistake and like realize, like cut something out if it's not working. Uh, Because Mm -hmm. I think if you take too long to when you see a mistake and you're just kind of like, okay, let me just keep going. Rather say, look, maybe if it's an employee, this person's not working in the company and they're just not doing well, they're lazy, they're pulling the team down, then you need to get them out because they will ruin your company culture and so forth. Or if you take on new services and it's not working and you need to stop that part of the business, then try end it as soon as possible when you know it's not working then delaying that Mm. I think that's one thing like don't be scared of failure (laughs) failure is okay (laughs) you'll get up and try something else and failure is how you learn yeah Mm. now you've mentioned employees Mm -hmm. now running a company comes with a lot of responsibility Mm -hmm. Uh, what is the easiest and the hardest part of your job (laughs) Uh, funny enough I find finding clients the easier part of my job the hardest part for me is managing employees but I also find that's just a personal thing because everyone has their favorites and things Mm -hmm. they're not so fond of um I think for me it's just a tough one because like when you are an entrepreneur you just you self-motivated you get up you'll work till late no one has to ask you to do that and I find now with me having a team I have to um help motivate them and get them also on board and I have to share my energy so that 
the whole team is on the same page and you know I just like I don't know I don't know about other people but like I don't like the the corporate part of managing employees you know the nitty-gritty when you have to sit someone down and have those hard conversations like you're not performing Mm. well I have to give you a warning letter and I don't like that part but I am working towards it and it's like I'm trying to strengthen my management skills but it's not my favorite part of running a business (laughs) yeah I think I find joy in all other things (laughs) Hmm. fortunately for you your company is is based in in the digital spectrum um but keeping up morale and and such how did you and your company adapt with the new challenges brought on by the COVID pandemic Mm -hmm. did you guys have to restructure or do anything like that so interestingly enough I just before COVID I actually got rid of our offices because I just I personally didn't see the value in having an office because we're digital we actually would see each other at the office once or twice a week so I just thought what's the point of having an office when it's only occupied mm. once a week basically so we already went digital um, and then when the pandemic like hit it was like we were already online um, sure. I think it's just the norm. Uh, there is that we. I think as a team, we all just miss the social aspect of being at the office because now it's like you end up on a call and you talk about the work, and then everyone runs off the call because everyone has call fatigue. <laughs> and <laughs> when you're in the office, there's those small conversations people have, like, "Oh my gosh, guys, this weekend I was out and I saw this and this company have this advert, and it is so cool." Or this happened during my weekend and you get to know the team better. So I find that now we miss out on the small conversations, which become the big conversations. And that's how you get to know someone better. And it's not just work only. <laughs> yeah. So it definitely, definitely had an effect on your um, culture of the company or kind of the intimacy that you build around the coworkers. Yes. No, definitely, because we we really like close team. So that's quite nice. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but kudos on the foresight of, you know, getting out of the office. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I'm like, it was pure luck and good timing. <laughs> yeah. I'm mm-hmm. um, so, you know, what positive changes have you noticed emerge during this time? You know, considering a lot of, you know, a lot of companies did foreclose. Mm-hmm. Um, but but there's obviously, you know, as people have adapted, new opportunities to arise. Do you see any trends emerging? Have you noticed anything, any positive changes? Um, for us personally, well, I'll just say for me personally and the business, uh, I've just seen that um, before I felt like we had a harder sell to let people understand how important it is to have a website or their social media pages going. I find now people are so open to it and it's you don't have to hard sell as much as we did before because I think the whole pandemic made people realize how important their online presence is and that's the change we've had where it's so amazing how people are like yes yes the website needs to work oh my goodness the social pages need to be cleaned up oh my god (laughs) we need a strategy (laughs) you know and for us that that was very good for us because then we were like great okay you ready for this let's take you through the journey and let's show you how so that's the change I've seen there's just more of an uptake on digital and it's no longer the scary beast and it's so nice to connect with our clients online and Mm -hmm. not have the whole get in the car go to a meeting look like uh in-person meetings are still the best like it's just nice to have that face-to-face conversation but I think Mm -hmm. it's also good for them to also see that business can happen online without any physical meetings so that was quite it's been an interesting time Mm -hmm. Working from home has become popular, but it has both its pros and cons. For companies, accountability from both the employers and employees are crucial to the success of the company. 
technology has become an integral part of our home office and is no longer seen as a luxury but as a vital requirement to do one's job. Yet, many communities have yet to get access to these types of resources. Despite all of this, a surge of entrepreneurs have been entering the digital space where freelancers and companies now compete for the same market. Yeah, no, digital has definitely become an essential part um, of today's markets. Mm. Uh, but, you know, I've also, um, a lot of people have lost, lost their jobs. Mm. And I've noticed a lot of entrepreneurs creeping out into this whole new market, this whole new digital platform. And um, have you have you seen the same type of trend emerge, or is it not your experience? Mm, I, I think so, actually. I, I have seen that there's more, uh, there's a lot more people who are entering the space and offering the services. Um, but yeah, it's it's, it's tricky to say. <laughs> It'll be hard as well from yeah. our perspective because we, um, I guess, really focusing a lot more on who can we service and. I do know in our space, uh, the barriers of entry are quite low. So there's, it's always an easy um, industry to enter. So I will also understand mm. if people are doing that. Mm -hmm. You can definitely make a living, um, freelance, uh, be self-employed, have two clients or so, and help them with digital. So it's, it's an interesting space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, for sure. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I I did my research and I read an interview and it said that Saturdays are your days off and Sundays, you know, it's, it's set aside for planning out your week. Now, with only one day out of seven to yourself, how do you manage to spend time with family and friends, networking, DJing and self-care? <laughs> wow. Well, uh, yeah, I'm also like, Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't I, I think it's also because I don't view my work as work so like for instance yesterday I had a meeting um so I won't be like oh my gosh the whole day I worked it's it's like part of my life but I try have at least one day off religiously so today is the day for me um and like well thank goodness I'm not DJing anymore so that's at least one thing off the plate but I I don't know I just I make it work I I still go to like friends events I try to stay as balanced as possible um because I also mm -hmm. think it's great to put your everything in your business but I also wouldn't want to like put my head like look up one day and go wow I have not spoken to anyone in two years because it's very possible. <laughs> but, yeah, I, just, I, I make the time. So for friends like, hey, I, um, do you want to come over? We're having a braai. I'll be like, cool. If it's Saturday, then that means I'll work on Sunday. So yeah, then I'll go through and try just to chill out because I've done it the other way where you work seven days a week and it's it's not sustainable. <laughs> yeah, you end up running out. No. <laughs> so I am yeah. definitely forced to have one day off a week. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. Um, you said DJing is off the plate. Mm. I mean, you used to love that. You were renowned in the, for, especially in the Pretoria region. Uh, you know that and the lady. Mm -hmm. uh, is it is it something you miss? I aspects of it I do, um, but yeah, I think it was one of those. I enjoyed it when I did it, and now I'm just in a new chapter. Yeah, I think yeah. that's how I feel about it now. <laughs> <laughs> but what would you do if you had more free time? Mm. I would, okay, if we weren't in the circumstances we're in now, I would definitely <laughs> travel more. That's, that's it. If I could be in a new country for six months, okay, maybe a year, at a time because six months is too short I really like a year yeah. um new country do Mexico and then do I don't know like Tanzania for a year like just literally travel yet still work that I would do that for the rest of my life <laughs> I think it would be mm. yeah 
But you did spend some quite quite some time in Europe at some points, mm-hmm. where you basically tried living as a digital nomad. Yeah. Was it as fun as it looked, or was there any were there unexpected challenges that actually came up? Oh, first of all, I realized I'm not one that likes living in a suitcase. <laughs> like. <laughs> I do not like it. First of all, my bag was too big. Let's just start there. Like, um, I oh, learned a lesson, and I'm like, I know you know, I definitely packed a big bag. <laughs> <laughs> but first mistake, bag was too big. Um, second of all, I I didn't like the the suitcase life. Loved, loved, loved going to because I went to four different countries. It was great. Like I was visiting Germany, uh, did the Netherlands, um, then Czech Republic, and then what was the other country? Um, I forgot right now. But yeah, it was it was nice doing that. But the <laughs> one thing, oh Prague, yeah, the one thing I realized I don't like, and that's why I said I'd stay in a place for a year, is because. Every time I just got settled, like it'll be three weeks, four weeks, I'm starting to settle in and then I'm moving to mm. another country. It was so intense. Like, to be honest, I cried every time I left the country because I had made such amazing friends who I still talk to today from all over the world. Yeah. It was such a nice experience. And I just think if you wanted, well, for me, I wouldn't digital nomad in the sense of one month in each country I would do six to a year because then you get the full essence of the country because just as I started making friends or I just learned about the local spot with the best food it was like oh I'm packing Mm. and leaving again (laughs) so for me that part was not so fun but it was a wonderful experience like I always say it's important for everyone to put themselves out of their comfort zones and be a foreigner Mm -hmm. somewhere because I literally learned that like you know what the world is also not because I just thought maybe it's like a oh maybe there's always a foreign issue like especially in South Africa but I realized it's all over the world no one really likes foreigners so (laughs) it's good to make yourself a foreigner somewhere else and when you go home then you realize all the opportunities you have and it just reminds you to take advantage of that Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I can imagine it gives you a little more humility. Oh, definitely. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a really good thing. Be uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, I definitely hope, um, you know, traveling, it will probably look a whole lot different in the future. Mm. Um, but that, you know, that we actually, you know, be able to cross over it someday and um, have those experiences sitting in a cafe in a strange country mm-hmm. no one speaks english and you have to explain what, oh why. yeah no that's the best <laughs> it's quite <laughs> interesting yeah. and then you realize the world uh, the whole world doesn't speak english <laughs> like mm-hmm. yeah for sure but i mean I, I think we should know living in a country with 11 official oh, languages yeah. <laughs> definitely <laughs> <laughs> so it was a great experience hmm. yeah uh, what, you know, you know, considering you want to go travel more when when everything blows over, probably in a year or mm-hmm. two. But you know, if you look at your bucket list, what is the most absurd item that you really want to do? Hmm. I I think it's the travel part. I I really that, that doesn't seem too absurd. Um, <laughs> although with COVID, you know, it all depends on timing, I suppose. Yeah. Well, I guess, in, like, as much as it's okay, I think I I I think it's a tough one because it's also like when running a business, like my clients still want to see me, so it's always like a. Mm it does seem in a way distant because it's kind of like if you're traveling the whole time when do you have that coffee with them like all that face to face like I I don't know but we'll see because the the thing is things are changing it's like how long can you be away before it affects the relationship because right now it's like we have a lot of online meetings but there's still that once every two months like quick coffee in person, like social distancing, you and one or two other people from their team 
and that's it. So mm. I think that's why it seems absurd or like far, a far distant, hard thing to achieve because it's like, how do you do both, grow the business and travel? <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. Yeah. And with the team. Um, but the team thing is also changing because I see online does work, but I still feel like there is that missing thing. Like um, we're going to do like lunch um, two weeks from now just to meet up and just reconnect and see each other face to face for a change and it's just like once I think like once every three to six months you want to have that engagement mm. yeah no and hopefully with uh, vaccines being manufactured and being tasted so quickly mm. it will hope you know it will be it'll be quite soon yeah considering cherry republic started in your apartment it wasn't called cherry republic Mm -hmm. um back back then i remember it was it was called black cherry appears Uh, it was black cherry media so black cherry appears was the first business i started when i was 19 and Mm. then i was like when i started the digital marketing business i said hey let me use the same name but just branded as media so that's when I just started mm. Black Cherry Media. <laughs> and what was the reason for changing it from Black Cherry Media to Cherry Republic? Mm-hmm. So with that, um, well, it's like, I guess, a technical reason. <laughs> we we were trying to get our uh, .com um, for Black Cherry Media, but it was already occupied by some guy in mm-hmm. LA. Like and he was just domain parking, so to actually get the <laughs> domain from him, he wanted like crazy amounts in terms of US dollars, and I was like, mm. "Oh, this is really not worth it." And I just said, "Hey, mm. this is an opportunity for like rebirth," because I also felt like the company had grown and we're in a different space, and I just thought, "Why don't you just rebrand and see what happens?" and I, I think it was awesome. So I found um, cherryrepublic.com and I was like, great, let's let's do this thing. And we just rebranded and, yeah, I, I like the new look. I like the name. <laughs> yeah. And I, it's it's nice because we have a .com because that also helps when you're servicing clients abroad. Um, yes. So, yeah, that was the whole vision behind that. Okay. Well, Imagine you be able to talk to your nineteen year old year old self again, right? Okay. What would you, what advice would you give her, knowing what you know now? Mm-hmm. Oh, I think she didn't listen to herself. She was trying to do what the world says is the right thing to do, like follow the formula. You go to school, you get mm-hmm. a degree, you go work. I would have said I should have just definitely followed my gut sooner rather than later Mm. because I was but she like nervous and young so I think that's what I tell myself I'd say whatever you're thinking right now do it don't don't Mm. it's correct it's right for you it's not what everyone's doing but it's right for you (laughs) yeah I think I think a lot of people make that much mistake especially when you're young Mm-hmm. Well, maybe right now to whoever's listening. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's, it's constant learning and mistakes. <laughs> it's never easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, and what is the future of Cherry Republic? You you mentioned you are trying to go abroad mm-hmm. with your digital marketing. Yeah. So, um, I my vision and my goal is to grow a global digital marketing company and Mm. that's what we're currently working on now just making sure we're getting more clients abroad and it's great to have the South African market and grow here but I I really want us to be a global business because I I, my the whole philosophy is why not Mm. that's how I feel (laughs) why not (laughs) Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh. But thank you so much for taking the time. I really enjoy our chat, and I'm sure the listeners learned quite a bit from you and your experience. Oh, thank you. And thanks for having me. This was a really nice conversation.
No, it's a pleasure. Is there anything you would like the listeners to know about? I'll definitely add your plugs in the description. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Well, I think that's about it. Uh, if you guys are not following our Instagram account, uh, check it out at, at Cherry Republic. Cherry Republic with a K at the end. <laughs> and <laughs> like, just check out the work we're doing. Our website is also there. And yeah, I think follow, follow, follow. <laughs> that's all I can ask. <laughs> great mm -hmm. thanks thanks for being here oh, really appreciate thanks it thanks for having me <laughs> entrepreneurship is not for everyone but if you are someone with something special to offer the world i ask you why not 2020 has sprung so many surprises why not surprise yourself thanks again to the lady for joining us this week be sure to follow the links in the description for more information on her and Jerry Republic. And that's a wrap. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. And be sure to subscribe to this podcast to avoid missing out on any future episodes. I'd appreciate it if you could leave a review. And if you have any thoughts on today's episode or perhaps topics you would like me to touch on, you can contact me via email. A link is provided in the description. I hope today's episode provided some new insights to what it means to be human. And I hope to see you in the next one.